Hey everyone, and welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we are finally adding the Cypress tests we've been working on to our CI CD pipeline. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. We would definitely appreciate it. But without any further ado, let's jump into it. The Cypress CI CD integration allows you to run your Cypress tests anytime something in your repository happens, like uh, it could be a code commit or a PR merge or you're deploying to production. You can run your tests at those times during your pipeline. You'd want to implement the execution of these Cypress tests in your CI CD pipeline so that your teammates don't have to necessarily worry about running their tests locally all the time. Uh, adding it to your CI CD pipeline will automate this process for them. Yeah, and it'll save them and you a lot of time while you're developing because you won't have to wait for these tests to run locally. You can just offload that to your CI CD server and keep working on your local development machine. Something important to keep in mind when you're adding new Cypress tests to your CI CD pipeline is the more tests you add, the more time it takes to actually run and build these tests and your code. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't write these Cypress tests, but if you do, you might only want to run them uh, at times like when you're attempting to deploy a new production version of your app, or maybe when you're trying to merge in a branch into your master branch. So if you've been following along with our Cypress series, it's going to be pretty easy to integrate the CI CD functionality. And if you haven't been following along, you might want to check out those introductory videos. Uh, we'll post the clickable thing up there and put a link in the description. So as you may know already, we are using GitHub Actions for our CI CD pipeline. With the commands that we're gonna be showing in this video, you should be able to use for your uh, pipeline if you are not using GitHub Actions. So first off, at a high level, if you're using a transpiler like Webpack or Babel, or you're using some sort of web framework like Angular or React, you'll need to build your application's code down into its distribution folder, and then we'll be able to serve that up and test that uh, transpiled code. Then we'll start up our application on a local server so that Cypress can run our tests against it. And once it's finished, then the server can shut itself down. So before we get started, you will need to install two new packages to help with the uh, serving of the application. The first one is the start server and test package. And you can install that using this command right here, which is just npm install, save dev, uh, start server and test. And that's just gonna save it to your developer dependencies. And the second command that you'll need to install or the second library that you'll need to install is the Angular HTTP server if you're using Angular. Or if you're not using Angular, you'll still need a way to serve your files locally. And you can do that with just the normal HTTP server command and you can use this command right here to install that library, which is just another npm install, save dev, HTTP server, or Angular HTTP server. And that's just gonna add that to your dev dependencies as well. Now it's time for the tutorial portion of this episode. And the first thing we did here was just add a few commands to our package.json file. The first command here, ci colon start server, is going to run our Angular HTTP server. Um, and if you're not using Angular, then you're just HTTP server. And what this is going to do is actually serve up our index.html file from our build distro on port uh, 4200. Um, so yeah, that's the first command. The next command, cy colon run here, runs Cypress in headless mode. And what this basically means is you don't need a UI to actually run these Cypress tests. It runs it in headless, which means UI list basically. It also tells Cypress to use the Chrome browser in headless mode, but you can also switch this out for like Firefox or whichever browser you want to use as long as it's compliant with Cypress. So the third command that we're adding here is the CI sci run command, which is going to combine both of those two previous commands into one by using our start server and test package that we installed earlier. And so what it's gonna do is it's going to run, the first parameter you give start server and test is a command to run to start your server. And then you tell start server and test which port or what URL to look at to know when your server is fully started up and ready to go. And so we're telling it 
Go ahead and look at localhost 4200 because that's where we're serving our app. And then the third parameter is a second command to run once your, once your server is up and running. And so as soon as 4200 is ready to go, it's going to run our sci colon run command, which will just cause Cypress to start up and run its tests against that 4200 port on our local server. And the reason we're using the start server and test command to combine all of this into one is that start server and test will know when Cypress is done running its tests and it will automatically shut down all of our localhost servers for us so that our CI CD build can proceed. Now that we have our commands written, you'll want to actually run these commands to test them. But make sure that you build your project first, as we mentioned earlier in the episode, um, otherwise these will not work. You'll also want to make sure that you run each uh, command separately, one by one, starting with the first one, ci colon start server, then the second one, cy colon run, and then the third one, ci colon cy dash run, just to make sure that when you run a specific, a specific command that you aren't getting errors if you're just running the last one um, and not knowing which command is causing that error. And speaking of errors, we ran into a couple when developing this uh, tutorial for you. So we're just gonna cover those really quickly in case you run into the same issues, you will know how to handle them because we prepared you. Okay, the first one is because we're actually using a service worker in our Angular application. Now, if you're using a service worker in your app, you might need to make these adjustments to your build process. Uh, for us, specifically in Angular, we had to create a new Angular build configuration in our Angular JSON, and I'll show you that now. And so what we did is we made this production no SW build config, and that stands for no service worker. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna build the production version of our application without the service worker included in this build process. So you can see down here, we've set service worker to false, and so it won't include any of our service worker files in our disk folder. Another error you may find when running these tests is a course error, and it kind of looks like this. Uh, so if you do get this error, you might want to update the Chrome Web Security to false in your cypress.json file, and hopefully that should resolve that error. Another error that we were getting was um, tests they were taking really long to actually run through and they were timing out and failing. So what you might want to do is update the timeouts in this cypress.json file. We have the page load timeout that we set to 60,000 and also the default command timeout that we set to uh, 60,000. So if you update those values, hopefully those uh, tests shouldn't fail. All right, now that we have tested our scripts and make sure they work and we've solved every error that could possibly come up, we're going to jump into our GitHub Actions YAML file that specifies what actions occur when a uh, PR is created in our GitHub repository. Now you might have different actions going on, but we're doing a PR, uh, a PR creation. And so we're, we've just added one step and we've modified another step. And so you can see right here, these are the two steps that we have updated. The first one we've updated so that it is utilizing that no service worker build config for our Angular build. And the second one is us actually running our Cypress test suite using the commands that we just tested in our local terminal. Also keep in mind that this is not the CI CD pipeline for our production deployment. Uh, so building without the service worker is okay since we're not actually deploying this to our production server anyways. Now that we have pushed these changes to GitHub, we can utilize this GitHub action, which means that the tests will now run on any PR creation, and we just so happen to have created a PR. And so you can see in our GitHub actions after they've finished running that there's a new step for run Cypress test suite. And if we click on it and open it up so we can see the logs, we can see that the headless version of Cypress actually did start up with Chrome and it's now running our homepage tests and you can see the network traffic from our uh, uh, local server and you can see that it passed two tests and that it's running the login tests. We passed all of those 
And so we get a total of five, five passing tests. And so of course our GitHub Actions is gonna pass, which means this merge, uh, this PR merge can go ahead without any problems. No one's broken any tests. But what happens for a moment? What happens if one of the tests doesn't pass? What do we do then? Well, if we look at a commit that did end up failing, uh, you'll see exactly what happens when a Cypress test fails. So if we scroll down a little bit here, I mean, you can already see that there's a red X on it, which is not a good thing in the first place. Uh, you can, if we keep scrolling here, we got some tests that failed. Uh, we have one test that fails right here, and eventually this errors out so that you actually can't merge this PR now because you have a build error. Um, so that's basically what happens if the tests fail. Lastly, there are many other options you can use with the Cypress CLI when running in headless mode, like recording your tests. So you can have Cypress record your tests and actually watch the playback of the tests interacting with your site and see what went wrong where or what went right. Um, you can also use the parallel command for the CLI of Cypress so that your tests run in parallel with one another and this really helps out if you have a ton of tests that take a long time, you can parallelize them and have them run in parallel so it's a lot faster. All you need to do to accomplish this is add the Cypress API key on as a flag on your Cypress commands that we showed earlier, um, but we'll add some documentation on how to set this up. And just keep in mind that these, like the recording and the parallelization is actually stored on Cypress's servers, so you'll have to go to your Cypress dashboard to actually view this. Thank you so much for watching. That's gonna wrap it up for our Cypress CI CD integration video. We hope you learned a lot. If you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Also maybe check out our Small Batch Devs podcast. It's on most of your most popular podcasting platforms. Um, so we actually hit number one on Spotify last week. <laughs> That's a lie. We did not. We hit number two? No. Very far down. Very, yeah. Think of the biggest number you can possibly think of, and that's the number we hit. Setting our goals very high. But anyways, we appreciate you watching this video, um, and we'll see you very soon. Peace.